Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on Beyond Local. A uh, big surprise this week, there is no Chris Jones, so you're stuck with me. Um, I've been on the podcast a handful of times, I'm Steve Blackburn, Director of Operations here at the company, and I have the wonderfully talented, working from home, Miss Landis Ostrowski sitting with us. So Landis, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I feel like I'm invited to an exclusive group now. Well, I mean, it's it's exclusive only in typically we're in this room and you're getting to work from home, so you're invited. But uh, as a member of the team, I, of course, I wanted you on. And I was glad that your first time on, it was me who got to interview you because I, I feel like you and I have have a, have a good time at work together and uh, work on a lot of accounts together. So I'm, I'm glad to be talking to you again. So guys, this is Landy. She is one of our SEO uh, account managers. I, I, I struggled with that because you do a lot of everything. Um, if you wore hats, you would have many hats. So today though, episode 16, we're going to talk about your recent blog post, which I got to read and might I say was 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 fantastic and very entertaining. Uh, how to do local SEO. So, how, tell me, how long have you been been with the company? I know that I was involved in that process, but it's been a while. Yeah, so I've been um, here as an SEO specialist since December. Um, I actually have a past with the company though, because I did work as an intern in 2018. So, ended up coming back because I just missed everybody so much. And here I am. <laughs> well, we couldn't be luckier than to have someone like you on our team. So your blog post, uh, what made you choose that topic? I mean, there's thousands of things you could have written about, but you chose to go after how to do local SEO. Why, what made you do that? Um, I So I personally work with a lot of accounts that are local accounts. So this is something that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I often get a lot of questions just in general of what is SEO and what I do for a living. It seems to be kind of foreign to people, um, especially smaller local businesses. So if you're working with a bigger company or an e-commerce company, they may have kind of an idea or a plan or someone that does their SEO for them. Um, but I find when it comes to local companies, a lot of times they either have never heard of SEO, they know they should be implementing SEO, but have absolutely no clue where to start or they've tried to implement it on their own and have failed so i thought it would be nice to put together kind of um, an easy to follow how to do local seo guide for those smaller local companies perfect perfect and it's funny that we're talking about this i mean if you look behind me it says be on local um but we're talking about local and i i do want to tell everyone that when landis is talking about local clients she's not just saying to the Scranton Wilkesbury area. Um, this is not how to get found in, you know, northeastern Pennsylvania. This is how to get found uh, locally within whatever market you're in. I know Landis works on some accounts that are, when she says local, it's in other states. You know, Denver, Colorado. She runs local campaigns on, or just all over. So before we dive in, I, I just want to give our our audience the the proper setup so that you can deliver. Um, so I know one of the most important things in local SEO is making sure that you have a set up and optimized Google business. Uh, yeah, Google my business page. So what are we looking for here? And what should we be adding that a lot of people kind of miss? Yeah, so definitely making sure that your Google my business is set up in the first place and then optimize is very important. Um, and it's a lot of things that people usually, or a lot of times it's something that people skip over. Um, but it's very important because it's essentially you handing Google on a silver platter exactly what your company is, what you do, what you're all about. Um, so some things that should be included in here are like your, a list of your hours and operate your hours of operation and the days that that you're open. Um, you want to add a detailed and unique company description to tell Google what you're all about. You want to add photos, add um, updated contact information, so phone numbers, emails, addresses, anything like that. Um, you want to make sure that your company's category is correct because a lot of times this is something that we run into um, where a lot of our clients don't have the correct category. So for example, LSEO would be under Internet Marketing Services in Wilkes-Barre. Um, and then you also want to 
encourage your customers to leave responses um, and reviews on your Google My Business because Google does take reviews into consideration when they are ranking your website um, quite a bit. So, well, I think not only that, but if I'm a consumer, which I mean I am, and so are you, if it comes down to, and I'm looking for, eh, say anything, uh, best bike repair company. You know, I have a bike and I got a flat tire. So I Google best bike repair company. If the first thing that comes up in the local pack is a company with one, three and a half star review. And the next person is somebody with 77 star or 77 reviews at 4.4 stars. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go there probably. That's more people that have said, hey, they do quality work. So it gives us that that little bit of uh, uh, of trust. Would, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of what SEO is doing is um, telling Google how trustworthy your company and your website actually is. So reviews are a very strong basis for that. All right. So the other part to this, though, and I know that you wrote about SEO, but I like to, you know me, always weave everything in. So... I want to talk a little bit about how social media can help your SEO because people often either look at it and they say, oh, well, it, social media, that's part of SEM, search engine marketing, not search engine optimization, or they don't know the difference between SEO and SEM, especially when we're dealing with accounts that are marketing more to a local level. So can you touch on a little bit how social media might help your SEO efforts, even though it's, you know, maybe SEM? Yeah, so um, social media is something that every company should be utilizing now in the digital age. I mean, people are constantly on social media. So for your company to not be on social media would be a disservice to your company. Um, so I think it's very important because you can also link that to your Google My Business account that we just discussed. Um, and then Google will take your social accounts into consideration when they are ranking you. And it's another great place for people to leave reviews on your company, which would help out with your SEO as well. I know a lot of times, um, say I'm looking to go on a wine trip with my friends this weekend, instead of going right to Google, I might go on Facebook to look. Um, more into local wineries and find reviews before making my decision on where I'm going to go this weekend. Oh, totally, totally. And I know that you are quite the uh, the wino. So tell me some of those local wineries that you've visited in the past and, and, and you know, maybe that you found via social media or a Google search. Yes. Yeah, so I'm currently slightly retired um, wine connoisseur. Sabbatical. Uh, sabbatical. It's not retirement. It's a sabbatical. So I'm nine months pregnant, but um, a lot of my favorite wineries, such as Blue Ridge, which is local, um, I did find online and on social media. So I think that's really important for you to establish your business on social media because a lot of people will find you that way or will read your reviews that way or will share your business that way. Um, and it gets you a lot more customers. And just one other point to there. Again, Stephen is a fantastic name for a young man that's being brought into the world. It will set him up for success. Um, well, that is the list. I, I'm, I'm just, I just, I've got a personal preference and experience. A name like Michael, probably not as good. Stephen is fantastic. So, <laughs> uh, Landy, thank you for, for that. So, I know that We've gone over GMB, important. Facebook and other social media, important, because they're typically the, the two most common factors. So the next thing then is what I find a lot of clients and even businesses, I should say, not even our clients, which is businesses in general. And if, if I'm wrong, you know, correct me. But I think a lot of times as well, they put up content or they have a web page built. And then they never change it. You know, that's just one of those things where if I'm a lawyer, well, I say, well, the law doesn't change. I mean, the Constitution was written years ago, so the laws don't really change all that much. So my content doesn't change. And I feel like that's a huge, huge, huge problem that most smaller local businesses have 
because you wrote in your piece about how local content is king. Can you elaborate on that a little further for me? Yeah, so um, whether you are a local business or not, content is always king, but when it comes to a local business, you also want to make sure that with your, um, sorry, with your regular content that might be more niche specific, um, that you're also factoring in some local content. So whether that be, you know, local events that are going on that have to do with your business or local events you're sponsoring, um, you definitely want to make sure that that's in there because Google has actually gotten so advanced that you no longer have to write your articles and your blog posts for Google, but more for your audience. And um, they do take that into consideration as well. Perfect. Yeah. I, I was going to, while you were saying all of that, I was thinking to myself, Bert, 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 Bert. So uh, natural language and, and the way that people are going to search for things has become um, more and more important. But I want to, I want to peel back the onion just a little further. And I'm a nerd. I'm gonna say that and uh i think i think that you can agree um as director of operations my job is to kind of run the business but i i often get my hand caught in our cookie jar and i'm always trying to uh play around in accounts and things like that so what i'd like you to tell me about is how to optimize our pages for blog posts or excuse me our, our pages and blog posts for you know, local search, if we, if you can get into more of the, the technical stuff. Okay. Yeah. So when you are um, optimizing your pages and your blog posts, obviously you're not just optimizing your content for keywords, but also the title tags, the headers, the metadata, everything on the page should be optimized for those keywords. But when you bring in a local SEO to that, you also want to make sure that you're optimizing for the market that you're in. So you want to make sure that you're adding those locations, adding those cities, those towns that you're trying to optimize for. So Google can pick that up when they are um, ranking your site for when people are searching for those local terms like social or sorry, um, like pizza places near me or, you know, boutiques in Wilkes Bear. Um, and that'll definitely help your local SEO campaign. Right. I mean, if you pull out your, I mean, we've all got a cell phone in our pocket. So well, actually I put mine over there cause it's distracting. But, uh, so if, if we all pull out our cell phone and you Google Italian restaurant, I'm going to get a different result than you are because we're in different geolocations and Google takes based on intent, uh, a lot of that into, to consideration. So I'm glad that you went into kind of the title tags, the headers, the meta information, the, the geeky stuff that I really enjoy with LS or with SEO and, and why I really like to get into it. But another thing that I feel like a lot of businesses struggle with is a linking strategy. Not only, backlinks, which I'll definitely want to talk about with you, but internal linking, how to get people to the pages that matter and how to get them to where they want to go. I mean, your website is just a roadmap. So can you talk to me a little bit about how to, to help, help not only Google, but more importantly, the users navigate your website through a linking strategy? Yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people often focus too much on an inbound linking strategy, which is definitely important and definitely plays a huge role in your rankings. Um, but with that being said, they do not focus as much on an internal linking strategy, which can be just as important. Um, so essentially with an internal linking strategy, you're going to want to link to relevant pages within your own site in your own content. Um, and a lot of times, for example, Steve, always when he writes his blog post, he likes to write books, like huge blog posts, ultimate guides. And I'm too familiar with this because um, I've read a lot of his, most of his blog posts. Hold on, and hold on. I time out, time out. Let's, let's, let's stop that right there. You've fixed a lot of my blog posts. And for that, I thank you, um, you and Michael Ruth. But you guys have they, helped tremendously. They're very lengthy, which is a great thing. And so, for example, say Steve was writing something like the ultimate guide to SEO. 
a lot of times people aren't looking to, I mean, some people are looking to read a 10,000 word blog post. A lot of times people just want to look at one specific part of that blog post. So he may pop up when people are looking for specific information on content marketing with this big ultimate guide, but only a small portion of his blog post is about content marketing. So if within that small portion of content marketing, he also links out to maybe two other blog posts we have specifically dedicated to content marketing or our content marketing service page. People then can navigate through and look at all this other information regarding what they were looking for in the first place. And this is great because it boosts your page views. It helps to have customers easily navigate your website. And it's also going to bump up that session duration, which is going to in turn increase your rankings. Right. And, and lower the bounce rate, because now if I found something that I'm looking for, I'm going to read instead of, and then continue to go further. So another ranking factor obviously is if, if, if somebody comes to my website and doesn't engage with it and leaves, Google's going to say that I'm, I'm not all of that, that important. But you did yeah. say something that I want to get into next because Google started off and I, I mean, there's the, the old saying content is king, right? And we've all heard it and eh, it's something that I definitely believe. But then there's the link factor and not only the internal linking, but, but Google was started by a couple of guys that were academics, uh, Larry Page, Sergey Brin, both through academia started this search engine and all Google kind of reminds me of, and for those of you who who dreaded the the college thesis or paper, I apologize ahead of time, but was going into our work cited. And when we were writing a paper, whether it be an opinion piece or a factual piece, we needed to cite works to make our 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 body of work more credible. So we went in and we cited other people. Basically, that's what linking is to a website, correct? Yeah. So, um, all linking is to a website, um, and getting backlinks for your website is just telling Google how trustworthy your site is based on other people's opinions, essentially. So them linking back to you is saying that they trust you and Google should trust you too. So the more links that you get back to your website, the higher, um, they would rank you. And this just all goes into the trustworthy, the trustworthiness. So an example that I like to use a lot is if you're going into an interview. So when I came in for my interview at LSEO, Steve was the one to interview me. And on my resume and in my interview, I can tell you that I'm the best SEO specialist and I'm the best employee and I'm always on time, which may all be true, may all not be true. It's true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so Steve would be a really bad interviewer if he just took everything I said and ran with it. So what he does is he calls my references and he asks them, you know, if I'm really that trustworthy, if I'm really that great of an employee and has them back up what I said. So if you think of links back to your website as people just backing up what you have to say and backing up your brand and your company, um, that's going to all play into your domain authority and how high you rank in Google's eyes. Perfect. Well, thanks for that. Now, what I want to get into is a lot of people don't know how to do the backlinking stuff. Um, it's so I, I, I've said this a lot and and a lot of people think SEO is just voodoo magic. You know, we go over our crystal ball and poof, there we are in the SERPs. But uh, LSEO has some advanced tactics in link building that just about anyone can do, especially through some places like Cision and, and, and the like. And I know that you've helped uh, spearhead that, that initiative with us. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the layman and the regular person can go out and acquire some quality backlinks without a ton of research or work that they have to do? Yeah. So I like the one, one thing that I want to touch on there is, is that you said quality backlinks, because I think it's very important that we're not just getting hundreds of low quality backlinks from really spammy sites that maybe have absolutely nothing to do with, you know, what your website may be about, because not only are 
they not looked at as high as highly from Google, but they can actually negatively impact your rankings and potentially get you um, a penalty from Google. So you want to do the most, you want to get the most organic backlinks. One of my favorite things and something that I do very often is I turn to HARO, which stands for Help a Reporter Out. Um, it's a great website that we utilize very often um, where a lot of news reporters will reach out looking for experts on specific topics. Um, so if there's a topic posted on local SEO, I can reply as an expert. And if they use my quote, oftentimes we'll get a link back from that. And it's a very organic way to get links back from very good, high quality websites. Um, as well as for local content, just from sponsoring events, oftentimes we'll get a lot of um, links back. So that's a great, a great way to get some links back for some of our local clients. Right. Or another thing might be making sure that you're in all of the business directories, or even if you're in your local chamber of commerce, um, there's all of the organizations you have, have a website. They have a link to a lot of times the members on its website. So check those places. If you're not in there, ask how you can get on there and ask if they'll give you a link. Um, I really think it's that easy. A lot of times it's just asking. Um, so we've talked about content. We've talked about GMB, we've talked about social media, and we've talked about linking, both internal and external. One of the other things I want to talk about, though, is I feel like a lot of local businesses are more on the go. If someone, if I look at our traffic, you know, LSEO, digital marketing agency, award-winning digital marketing agency, and up for some more awards, but we'll get into that another day. Um, so if I look at our traffic, it's about 60-40, where 60% 60 of the people are still getting to us from a desktop. If I look at some people that we manage local campaigns for, again, because I have my hand in the cookie jar, sometimes where it doesn't belong, and you know I'm an analytics nerd, um, but I notice it's more 70-30, and it's going toward more people on mobile devices. So in today's today's world 2020 we have to have mobile friendly websites and again that's a place where I think a lot of local businesses fail to put a lot of resources can you tell me a little bit more about the mobile friendly websites yeah I mean mobile friendly is something that everyone should be doing whether they're a local business or not um, but it does play in a lot with mobile uh, with local businesses because um, people are often searching for them when they are on the go, like you said. So about 60% of searches um, in 2020 are done on mobile devices. So quite simply, if your website isn't optimized to be to work and be compatible with mobile devices, you're most likely not showing up in any of those local searches and those near me searches that you want to. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I just learned a lot about local uh, local SEO. Um, so I want to thank you, Landy Ostrowski, for coming out here. And I want to tell the rest of you to go to the LSEO blog and check out Landis's piece, How to Do Local SEO. And if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to myself or to, to, to the woman herself, the, the brains behind the blog, uh, Landis. Landis, do we thank you so much. And uh, don't forget... Steven, wonderful name for a child. It will set him up for success. Um, I'm, I'm just saying. So thank you so much for coming on. Um, you look great. And uh, I can't wait to have you back in the office. Me too. I'm going a little crazy over here. But thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Steven. Gotcha. Added to the list. <laughs> for sure. Thanks so much, Landis. We'll see you soon. Guys, that was episode uh, 16, Beyond Local. Um, look for us next week. I'm going to be interviewing Michael Ruth, who I did have to give a little shout out here because Michael, again, helps with all of my blog posts. So uh, in sitting in for Chris Jones, this is Steve Blackburn. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>